Everybody and welcome to the Alex Cuesta Daily Show. How are we all doing out there? I'm doing swell here. I hope everybody had a fantastic weekend. But you made it through. You got here. You're here at the show. And today is Positivity Monday. It is Monday, March 7th, 2022. Before we get into anything fun, like, share, follow, subscribe, rate five stars on iTunes and Spotify. And as always, spread this word of mouth. Let people know that this is one of your podcasts of choice. You listen to it every day, yada, 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 all that good jazz, because it's a pretty damn swell show. And I know that you know that I know it. So there we go. Now, I want to preface this real quick. I don't know if anyone's going to be able to hear it, but this might be a quicker show because outside there is a absolute insane windstorm going on. There's obviously rain sprinkled in there, but I'm worried about the power going out. And the internet may be getting cut off. So I'm going to make this a quicker show than I normally do. And, you know, I say that, but I know I'm going to ramble. So let's just jump right into it. Um, Before we get into the positive stuff, we're going to start off with the Biden COVID tracker, which in a way you could look at it as positive. Um, Again, as always, we are holding Biden accountable until they stop calling this a pandemic. We are holding every death under his count, uh, under his ledger, every single case under his ledger to we are holding him to account there. He's the guy that came out and tweeted anyone with 200 plus thousand deaths isn't fit to be president. He took office with 401,000 deaths and we are almost on our way to 1 million with him. So let's go. It's been three days since I've done this. So we're going to go back on the fourth Friday. We were at 79,109,791,000 cases and we were at 955,290 deaths. As of today, the 7th, a Monday, we are at 79,265,726 deaths. That is an increase of 155,935, running for a three day average of 51,978. We are at deaths 958,437. That is a total of 3,147 for a three-day average of 1,049. We are almost under the 1,000 number. Like I've been saying, the numbers are looking better. Things are starting to go down. They continue to trend downward. And it is really because Joe Biden doesn't talk about it, isn't trying to do anything with it. And we are all reopening. Everywhere is reopening. Masks are coming off in mass. Um, There is no vaccine mandate unless you're a psycho Eric Adams over in New York City, who's easily one of the worst politicians in the country, and he's barely had a cup of coffee there. But um, I talked to a friend today who travels around the nation, and he told me he thinks that we might be throwing him back on soon because he's seen a lot of places that he thinks, you know, he he has a hunch and he travels around the country. So uh, maybe. Maybe, and I'm in New York over here, and we're one of the places that would definitely throw it back on. So who knows what the future is going to bring, but all I can bring you is the raw numbers. And the raw numbers say that we are trending in the right direction here. So let's hope that it keeps going, but the cases continue to pile up, the debts continue to pile up, and I will continue to hold Joe Biden accountable because that is what he deserves for coming in and campaigning on having a plan to defeat it failing at defeating it and now saying we need to live with it in the new normal and all this other bullshit. So sorry, Joe, you don't get a pass on this. Like you don't get a pass on most things. Um, Before we jump into the actual Positivity Monday article, I have to talk about an article that's disturbing in a little bit. So I talk all the time about how I read a bunch of stuff. And I've mentioned on the show that I read the things um, a lot of the times that I'm against. I do ingest a lot of things that I believe in. Don't get me wrong. You know, I, I like to follow those influential uh, philosophers and current talking heads that have a lot of influence in my belief system. Don't get me wrong. But I do like to venture out in every other book or every third book or so that I take in is a book of the opposing viewpoint. And one of the, well, two of the books that I've read have been by Klaus Schwab, 
You've heard me mention his name. He's a madman that um, is the brain, uh, the World Economic Forum is his brainchild. He is the chair, I believe, chairman or something like that. He runs it. He runs a World Economic Forum. I've explained what that was before. The biggest politicians, businessmen, NGO leaders, and all the wealthy um, people that make the world move and shake meet there in Davos, uh, Switzerland once a year to basically discuss how we're going to do things and what the global initiatives are. It is essentially targeting global governance without having a global government. Now, one of the things that in the books that I read from him is a 2016 book um, called The Fourth Industrial Revolution. And I believe strategies for the fourth industrial revolution was 2018, if not 2020. I'm going to look that up while I ramble. But overall, he is there's a lot of things in that book that are we're seeing. Right now, um, we are seeing a play out in front of our eyes. And one of the things is um, designer babies. And people are thinking, you know, what the hell could a designer baby be? What is that? Well, I'll tell you what a designer baby is. It is essentially when a scientist and a mother and father or whatever get to choose the genes and the traits um, that they would like to see in their baby. It's that simple. They would, they get to choose the genes that they would like to see in their baby. And it is a bizarre, bizarre thing. Now, honestly, what it is, is eugenics. If we're really, really looking at it, it is eugenics. They are playing God. They are doing experiments to try and see how things work out and really, really could be harming people. Like, honestly, if you give a shit about people, this is just straight up evil, what they are trying to do. But I came across an article and yes, 2018 is when shaping the future of the fourth revolution came out. I came across an article and, you know, it's one of the things that I didn't think were super on the way, but he's mentioned it in both books, designer babies and the pros and cons of genes, yada, yada, came across an article from um, South China Morning Post, which NewsGuard rates as a 85 out of 100. So I guess they're reliable. I'm stealing that from you, Tim Pool, using things from NewsGuard and telling people what the NewsGuard says, because NewsGuard is completely and totally slanted. Um, the title is Scientists Call for China to Protect World's First Gene Edited Babies. I read that correctly. Gene edited babies. Essentially, a scientist took two babies, edited their genes, and created a third baby. He did an experiment on human embryos after three girls were born, and he edited their genes. It's wild. Now, the article talks about how two um, bioethicists, I guess they are, scientists, are calling for the girls to be held in basically a scientific lab setting where they can be examined and they can be tested on to see how they are taking to this experiment. And they're trying to say it as a form of compassion. Now, if that's not as fucked up as it gets, I don't know what is. I don't know what is. We already messed with these three young girls. We already completely and totally screwed with their lives. Try, rearrange their genes. We don't know how it's going to affect them. Instead of trying to give them normal lives, we want to put them in a lab and we want to continue to test on them and we want to continue to monitor them to see they are just, they're not people. And it's two scientists specifically that are calling for it. They are not people to these scientists. They are just experiments. Eugenicists don't give a fuck about people. And that is exactly what this is. This is eugenics. This is experimenting on live humans and human life to see what the result is, to try and play God, to try and um, bend what uh, the human body does and the things you want the human body to do to your whim. This is evil shit. There is one science, uh, scientist there that is completely against it. It's written in the article that says, no, we need to give these girls a normal life. Give them foster care. Let them live. Let them become, you know, obviously, if they get sick or if anything happens, keep a close eye on them in that sense. But don't continue to test them. Don't continue to poke and prod them and leave them in a lab setting. And then when they are old enough to consent 
to whether or not they want to become the lab rats that they were bred to be, then they can consent to it. But don't hold them against their will as their babies, as their children, and make them do it. Now, the scientist that did this has been in jail since 2018. He's about to get out. So that's why this article was written. It was published on the 3rd of March um, by Echo G. So it, it's a bizarre case, and it's something we need to watch out for because this is something the rich and the powerful might start fucking around with. One scientist did it. He's jailed for it. It's against all the medical ethics to do this type of stuff. But man, it's scary when a madman like Klaus Schwab starts talking about it, and he has the ear of the rich and the powerful and the political around the world at minimum once a year. But then you hear Build Back Better everywhere. And that came from Davos, Switzerland, two years ago. That was the topic of conversation. Build back better to try and combat, you know, to try and figure out how we're going to come out of this pandemic. And what were they going to do? They were going to build back better. And then you hear it trumpeted by the Western leaders, by your Bidens, by your Boris Johnsons, by your Trudeaus, etc. So it's a scary thing. He called for it. It happened in 2018. And here we are. This scientist is about to get out. They're trying to decide what to do with his experiments who are human life. But then again, this is the same way that a lot of women speak about abortion in America. It's not human life yet. They're just embryos. They're just a clump of cells. Eugenicists are in all different shapes and styles, but they're still eugenicists. Margaret Sanger, the founder of Planned Parenthood, was a eugenicist. Let that ring through next time you try and defend Planned Parenthood, feminists. Just remember that your great leader who just who founded this awesome place to liberate women was a eugenicist. Go look up Margaret Sanger and see her opinions on certain things and go look up how she was thought of in the eugenicist community and the letters she wrote back and forth to the Nazi eugenicists. Yeah, they're, they're interesting. How about you go take up? But you know what, though? No, no, don't do that. Listen to Brian Stelter on CNN. Don't do your own homework. Only listen to CNN and the people there because they're the media and they only tell you what's right, trust them. All right, like I said, I ramble, but we are going to get into the nitty gritty of the article and it is Positivity Monday. So we are now going to switch to something positive here as I, after I just brought you all completely down. This article is written in the street. I know, not the street. She's not for the streets. Written in the street.com. It is written by Luke Aligna, 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 Aligna. Alinga, Alinga, Luke Alinga. Sorry, I fucked up your name. And it was written by on March 5th of this year. It is titled Elon Musk chooses his side between Russia and Ukraine. And the second byline there, Tesla CEO closely follows Russian invasion of Ukraine condemned around the world. Now, I'm going back to NewsGuard. I like to do this. NewsGuard gives this site 100 out of 100. I've never heard of the street.com. But according to NewsGuard, um, off, it's a website offering financial news, analysis, and advice on investments in the stock market. And they wrote an article about Elon Musk choosing a side under investing. So yeah, let's news guard. You're awesome. Let's go here. Elon Musk is not a CEO like the others. Like to say, like um, like to say, his critics and his admirers. The former judge him in it to be a whimsical approach for him. Oh my God! Let me start over with this whole thing again. Elon Musk is not a CEO like the others, like to say his critics and his admirers. The former judge him to be whimsical, reproach him for being uncontrollable and fear his unpredictable side. The latter, on the other hand, praises the fact that he is that he is never where you expect him to be. Sorry, I don't like this sentence structure at all. I apologize, Luke. I'm not a fan of your sentence structure to start this. Let's hope it gets better. And I read this already in my head. It just isn't coming out as well. But I tend to think of Elon Musk on the second I tend to praise him because Elon Musk seems to be his own man. He's a crazy environmentalist in my eyes. That's why he's trying to get to Mars and get off this planet. He firmly believes that we are fucking it up to the point of no return. But he's also his own man. Just because he's an environmentalist doesn't mean that he's going to agree with the psychos on the Green Party that do tree spiking. Doesn't mean he's going to agree with everything that climate change uh, scarers say about it. He's not on board with that. He's not on board with all the politics. And when you're as rich as he is, you don't have to pick a political side. Let's keep going. More than a week after the beginning of the invasion of Ukraine by Russia, the billionaire has just proven that he is definitely a CEO in his own right, who does not play in the same court as his peers. If a large number of companies have announced to suspend or stop their activities or their services in Russia, their leaders have not personally taken a position in this Russian war. 
Now, it's bizarre, everybody. It's bizarre to hear this because these same CEOs, these same billionaires have taken a fucking position on everything over the last five years. Everything. Every social justice cause, Colin Kaepernick, every feminist cause, every LGBTQ cause, they've all come out publicly and taken a side. Now they choose not to take a side. Now they choose not to say something when it's Ukraine versus Russia, when it's a legitimate war against two countries. Now they choose not to take a side. Now they choose to let their companies do the talking and they want it. The the CEOs themselves want to stay neutral. Look at these fucking cowards for who they are. Look at these cowards for who they are. Let's keep going. And most often they explain that they have no choice but to suspend their Russian activities because of the sanctions of the United States, the European Union and their allies. I don't know the ins and outs legally of that. They might have a case there where they might have a choice but to do business with them or not. I'm not going to get on the companies for that. It might be legitimate that they actually don't have a choice. This caution of business leaders is no different from the stance they tend to take on social issues. Stay neutral. And again, that's a fucking lie. NewsGuard, you need to get them on that because that is an absolute lie. They do not take a neutral stance on social issues. You can't tell me companies like Nike. You can't tell me companies um, uh, like Disney, like ESPN. Disney owns them. Any of these companies, CNN, uh, any all these major freaking companies that have changed around everything for social issues and social justice. No shot. No shot. You cannot say that they stay neutral. That's bullshit. Let's keep going. You have to believe that Elon Musk is not from this school. Um, The controversial businessman has thus chosen his side between Russia and Ukraine and made it known to his more than 76 million followers on Twitter. Hold strong, Ukraine, posted Tesla. Oh, excuse me. Chief executive officer Friday night. A message surrounded by three Ukrainian flags on the left and three others on the right. So there it is. He is choosing to back Ukraine. Now, how is he choosing to back Ukraine? Let's keep going, because that's the positivity part of this is what he does. And in case there were any doubts about this choice, Musk added a second message in which he sent his sympathies to the great people of Russia who do not want this. And he, that's exactly what he said. And it's true. And it's true. And it's a travesty what's going on against regular run of the mill Russian people. You know, I get it. Sanctions are a part of war. And it's going to hurt the populace at large when they do that. The governments make decisions that it hurts the populace. That is just a part of war. It's a terrible part of war. It happens. But what everything else is going on extracurricular against Russians around the world, things going on in the United States, the Russia phobia, the second red scare that's going on right now is insane. Insane. Anything Russian is persona non grata now. And could you imagine if this reaction occurred after 9-11? Anything like that, with any other country that you after 9 11, we were warned not to be Islamophobic, to be welcoming, to continue to support your Islamic and Muslim friends and, and families around the communities because they don't deserve the hate for something that happened. But Russians around the world that aren't a part of the government that have nothing to do with Vladimir Putin, like the soccer team getting held out of everything, the IOC deciding to hold Russian athletes out. Um, that's the um, International Olympic uh, Committee holding Russian athletes out. It's insane. I get it. The doping stuff from WADA already had them in hot water. But it, to take out on athletes, something going on politically, geopolitically, is ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Let's keep going. Russia continued its broad offensive in Ukraine on Saturday, Saturday pummeling cities and towns into rubble. And a limited ceasefire for the besieged southern city of Mariupol, a coastal city, ended nearly as soon as it began. Ukraine officials said Russia has violated cease- the ceasefire agreement, which they have. Russia is not. They've, they've called for stuff and they just have completely and totally went against it all. The Russian targeting of civilian infrastructure has set off a mass exodus of panicked people from cities, including Kiev, the capital, and created increasingly dire conditions for those who remain, the New York Times reports. About half a million people in Mariupol were entering their third day without heat, electricity, or water on Saturday, which is tragic what's going on. But I predicted is if this war went on anywhere near a week or after a week, the cities were going to start to get bombed. And that's exactly what happened. Russia couldn't just do it militarily, walking in straight up and trying to you know, march in, march through the military and get in there. Ukrainians are tough. Ukrainian military is small, but well-trained. And now they're getting, you know, state-of-the-art weaponry from the Western powers. So of course they were going to put up a fight. That's a tough group of people in a very good military. 
Russia is an extremely strong military, a massive military, but you know, against a very well trained military on their home turf, it's tough. It is tough. Let's keep going. Bus choice to side with Ukraine comes um, days after the billionaire sent Starlink satellite internet access terminals designed by SpaceX, his other company, to Ukraine. The billionaire had been challenged on Twitter by Mikhailo Fedorov, um, Fedorov, yeah, Ukrainian vice, Prim- uh, vice prime minister, which that's the positive part of this article, the Starlink stuff. So let, we're going to, I hope they have the tweet in here, I believe. Um Let's see. No, they don't have the tweet. So the prime minister, the vice prime minister did challenge Yama saying, like, you know, you're trying to send the Mar- go to Mars. Um, I'm paraphrasing here. You're attempting to get to Mars with all your great technology, but the people in Russia are suffering this and that. We have had our internet access and all that cut off. We could use Starlink satellites. And Elon Musk, right underneath, not long after, said they are on their way, sir. That's the beauty of this article. Elon Musk acted. And that is a beautiful thing. People are in need. You could say whatever you want about the war. You could talk about the motives of the war, whether the West goaded Russia to do this with the NATO expansion, if Putin is just a tyrannical madman, what the West role should be, yada, yada, yada. You can debate that up to high heaven. Elon Musk has chosen a side to help the people of Ukraine who are being oppressed and murdered because the war is going on on their turf. And he decided to do something in a way that only he can. The Russians know how important the Internet is to war right now, to have access to those things, to be able to control and command with that way. He, you know, Putin made sure to take out their Internet capabilities. So Musk responding with Starlink is massive. And that completely halts a lot of his own uh, motives, which I think they go into here. So let's keep going on the article, which that's the beauty of it. Elon Musk stepping up to act. Let's keep going. Musk warned, however, that these Starlink terminals are likely the target of attacks by Russian hackers or malicious actors. He quotes here, important warning, Starlink is is the only non-Russian communication system still working in some parts of Ukraine. So probability of it being targeted is high. Please use with caution the billionaire warrant. Um, Turn on Starlink only when needed and place antenna away as far from people as possible, he added. Place light camouflage over antenna to avoid detection. So yeah, he is trying to coach up people on how to use um, the Starlink in the best way to use it because he is right. It is going to be a target. The Russians know that they're going to go after that part. Um, The Russians also also know they really can't go after Elon Musk. The man has money like God. He is extremely intelligent, has some of the smartest people on the planet working for him. He's obviously going to be ready for cyber attacks, but man, he's, he's, He's putting his money where his mouth is. The guy just does things. He did. Um, he donated the six billion to the UN. Um, I think uh, the foundation for people that are you know suffer from hunger. After being challenged about the six billion, he donated it. That's another good story from Elon Musk. He challenged back the UN, said, "Give me the facts on why I should give you the six billion. If you give me satisfactory facts, I give it to you." Apparently, they gave him enough facts because he eventually cut a check for six billion or seven billion to that um, part of the UN. Elon Musk puts his money where his mouth is. He might be a little crazy on the green shit, but he does his part when he's asked to. And that is more than 99% of the other wealthy people, including those motherfuckers in Congress, do. Let's keep going. Starlink is the first consumer product from Musk's SpaceX company. It is a high-speed internet uh, powered by a network of thousands of small, low-orbit satellites. It enables residents of areas poorly served by the fixed their and mobile networks of telecom operators to access the internet. The thousands of small satellites circulate in low orbit, mainly 342 miles to 500 or 550 kilometers above the Earth. The system also needs ground stations all around the globe communicating with the satellites. Musk said Friday night he will not comply with the request of some governments, which he did not name, to block Russian media access to Starlink. And here is where Musk pisses a lot of people off, but this is where I agree with Musk 100%. He is providing a great service to the people of Ukraine. He is. And he's making sure they continue to have internet access as long as they stay online. But he's not going to deny it from anybody else as well. Um, Here's a quote from him in a tweet. Starlink has been told by some governments 
quote, not Ukraine, to block Russian news sources. We will not do so unless at gunpoint, he wrote. Sorry to be a free speech absolutionist. And that is where me and Elon Musk are in lockstep. I am also a free speech absolutionist. Um, I heard this for the first time, and I've always been about free speech. And I started listening to Glenn Beck again, mm, five years back now, about four or five years back now. I did. I watched him on Fox News a little. I was like, he's fucking crazy. Stumbled upon him again, started listening to him. And he said one of the things that have stuck with me. You cannot be about free speech if you do not defend the free speech of the people you disagree with the most. And that stuck with me 100%. And I've kept that with me forever. That I silencing is why it's such an evil thing to silence anybody. I will defend anybody's right to say whatever the fuck they want, as long as it is not threatening physical violence, death, guaranteeing that stuff, all that type of things. But just to say things, I am not going to deny them that right. I might disagree with them. I might argue with them vehemently. But I'm not going to tell them that you're not allowed to speak or it's a wrong thing or something bad should happen to you for saying it. I am also a free speech absolutionist. I will fight my hardest. I would give my life for somebody to speak their mind because that is worth dying for. Free speech is something worth dying for. Let's keep going. Musk also said that SpaceX will currently focus on countering attacks on Starlink terminals and deliberate. Um, inter- interference to disrupt communications. SpaceX reprioritized to cyber defense and overcoming signal jamming. Um, it will cause slight delays in Starship and Starlink V2. So listen to that thing right there. He could sit there and be a typical businessman and say, hey, I provided you with it. Now we're done here. Everything else is your problem. You can fight the cyber attacks. No. He provided the tech. So now what is he going to do? He's going to try and defend his tech as hard as he can so the Ukrainians can continue to use internet. Say what you want about Elon Musk, love him or hate him. The man has principles and the man genuinely gives a shit about people. Whether or not I agree with him on what he wants to do in order to help people continue to to live on, the man genuinely cares about human life. And he's shown it. He has shown it. And this is a super positive thing that he is doing over there. Unless you're rooting for Russia, then you probably hate him. Let's keep going. Since Russia invaded Ukraine, Ukraine has been regularly targeted by cyber attacks carried out by Russian operators, according to the country's IT security agency. That's raised fears for the country's telecommunications networks. Um, Musk's plan to turn SpaceX, his rocket and space tech company, into a firm capable of transporting people to the moon and Mars rests on the profitability of Starlink. SpaceX has already launched more than 2,000 Starlink satellites with the overall goal of launching about 12,000. And that's the end of my article. So The moral of the story here is Elon Musk is fucking awesome, okay? He does not go in lockstep with anybody. He doesn't. He says what he wants, and he does what he wants. He's got money like God, and a lot of times what he's doing with his money is positive. If you want to talk about renewables, the Tesla cars started all this. There might be cars now that boast that they're better. Tesla's technology is not this, it's not that. But Tesla, when we were all sitting here still messing with hybrids and thinking about the probabilities of electric cars. Here comes Elon Musk, creates a company, rolls out a Tesla and is like, here, fully electric car. Enjoy. Done. Before anybody was ready for it. And there you go. Sooner or later, boom, boom, boom. Tesla will start popping up on the road everywhere. We have electric cars and now Hyundai's doing it. Ford's going to start doing it. GM's going to all start doing it. Everyone's getting rid of the combustion engine all because Tesla forced the issue on everybody quickly. So if you're a fan of renewables, I don't know how you could hate this guy. He started that. If you're a fan of electric everything, he, he, he pushed the envelope. There was no way in hell that anybody was going to go full electric yet. We were all happy with hybrids. Hybrids were doing their thing. The Prius was, you know, every hippie's choice, saving the, mile, saving the world one mile at a time, doing 40 miles an hour everywhere, even in on parkways and throughways and freeways. But here comes Elon Musk and Tesla, and he's like, no, I fully believe in renewables, and I think electric cars can work. Here, I built a few. Go buy them. Boom. He started the craze. And now he just continues to put his money where his mouth is. He's, like I said, provided to the UN. um, I don't know what it's called. It's not, it's their, their hunger division, their poverty division to cure world hunger. He provided them with billions of dollars. He's now providing Starlink, which is billion dollar tech to Ukraine. And he could be charging them if he wanted to. It's meant for low income, but if he wants to, since it's a time of war, 
He could be charging them and do kind of a lend lease type of thing with them. He's not. He's providing it to them. And he's also providing security with his own people. And he's putting his neck out for this. Don't think the Russians are happy about this. Yeah, Russians are still using Starlink. They could still have access to it, and that's fine. But the fact that he is providing Ukrainians internet again is huge for their war effort. And whether you whether you are on the side of Ukraine or the side of Russia, if you're still a human, if you still enjoy humanity, there's something about that that should touch you, that he still wants to give people internet because this is also people on the ground that are just suffering there, that have useful smartphones, that can't use them because towers are down. They have no internet. They can't communicate with loved ones. They can't communicate with friends around the world. People might not know if their friends or, friends or loved ones are alive or dead in all the chaos going on in Ukraine now. And here comes Elon Musk with Starlink. And now they can all access Starlink. If they're near the antenna or whatever, it might be limited, but at least they can have a chance of having internet again. And they can now talk to loved ones again. They can communicate with each other again. That is massive. And it's massive for the morale of the Ukrainians. Ukraine is going to fall unless Russia and Ukraine reach a agreement where basically Russia eats Ukraine. Ukraine is going to fall one way or another. I don't think Russia will be satisfied just taking the territories in Crimea. That is not going to be okay because that is a defeat. If Russia does not take Ukraine, that is a black eye. That's a defeat. That's another Afghanistan. They can't do it. They have to take Ukraine. Ukraine will be taken over by Russia. But Elon Musk has done yeoman's work just with providing his tech to try and get these people some hope and some more internet. So there is positivity in this world, and there are good billionaires in this world. No, it's not Bill Gates. Bill Gates is a dickhead. No one, Bill Gates is not a good guy. But Elon Musk, until proven otherwise, seems to be a pretty fucking good guy. All right, everyone. Thanks for listening. Hope you enjoyed Positivity Monday. Yay! Please like, share, follow, subscribe, rate five stars on Spotify and iTunes. Spread this word of mouth. Say this show is pretty damn good. You like Positivity Mondays. And anywhere on social media, go search the Alex Cuesta show. You can find us there. Go follow. And again, share all the stuff that we share there because you people need to see. People need to know. Everyone's got to know. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for listening. I will catch up with everybody tomorrow. So long, y'all.